When you do the wave in a stadium, you're actually doing a pretty good job of simulating the kinds of interactions that go on in sound waves, mechanical waves, and even light waves. The underlying concept for a wave is that there is some medium, a thing that carries the wave. Here in this simulation, the medium is just people. In a sound wave, the medium is the atoms and molecules that make up the substance that carries the sound wave, often air. In a light wave, the medium is the electromagnetic field, kind of abstract. But what do all of these have in common? To act as a wave, what we need is some sort of time-delayed interaction between one part of the medium and the next. In the case of humans doing the stadium wave, we call this reaction time. When you see the person next to you put their hands up, you put your hands up. There's a bit of a delay because it takes you a second to react, and this delay sets the speed of the wave. In a sound wave, the air molecules interact through microscopic forces due to collisions. We tend to describe this interaction in a bulk way as pressure. So sound can be thought of as a wave of pressure moving through a substance. In a light wave, a charged object like an electron accelerates. Let's imagine it wiggles back and forth. The electric and magnetic fields around it react and they begin interacting with each other. And this wave propagates through space. So we can think of a wave as a set of instructions. Put your hands up, put your hands down, in the case of a stadium wave, or slosh forward, slosh backward, in the case of a sound wave. What if you get two different sets of instructions at the same time? What if the person to your right and the person to your left both say, throw up your arms? Or what if one says, throw up your arms, and the other says, sit down? One fundamental property of waves is that the particles in them obey the principle of superposition. The wave instructions can constructively or destructively interfere with one another. Let's set wave one width to five people and wave two width to 10 people. Let's set the type of interference to destructive. Now, these are not complete long train waves by any means, they are just single half wavelength bursts of a wave, much easier to visualize. Notice that when we hit play and the two waves contact each other, the person in the middle of the system doesn't move at all. She has received conflicting instructions. One set said, go up, and the other said, go down, and so she stayed put. If this were a water wave, she'd represent a calm part of the water. If this were a sound wave, she'd be somewhere quiet. A common student misconception about interference is that once the two waves destructively interfere, they are gone forever. In fact, as you can see here, the set of instructions simply pass right through one another. They cancel each other at a brief moment in time, but they are not destroyed in the usual sense of the word. Keep this in mind. I hope this gives you a good introduction to the working of waves. Thanks for watching.